Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Today was a, uh, a neat day. We just had a, a charity event here at my, my barn where people came out and uh, through the organization of a local car club, uh, toured my three wheelers, I brought them all out and now they're all out. And I figured since they're all out, what better time to put together a, a video for you guys and not quite sure what to do so I think what I'm gonna do I've con I've counseled with a couple good friends of mine PJ Hart Kim Dwyer and my wife you know good good friends of mine about what to do and uh, <laughs> what I think we're gonna do is I'm just gonna walk around and and talk about the machines in my collection just to show you what I've put together over the last five years and and uh, point some things out as I do it and yeah this is probably the only video where I'm gonna highlight them all like this so I don't know how long it'll take but we're gonna we're gonna do this and uh, hope you enjoy here we go so as part of my preparation for this event I typed up little descriptions of where I acquired these machines from and what year it was and just I was anticipating people coming that didn't know all the makes and models that you know aren't avid subscribers of the channel like all you guys are don't forget to like and subscribe you know you want to Palin's here with us so I guess maybe let's start at the beginning you know as I look at these balloon tire 90s it makes sense to maybe cover cover them first so as we all know the balloon tire 90s were made from 1970 to 1974 74 was the last year of the balloon tire this is a design idea kind of borrowed and elaborated on from the Argo tire by Honda engineers this was the first three-wheeler to uh, ever come into existence was the US 90 the Honda US 90 as they were referred to the the 74 is an ATC 90 you know these have stickers on them that say ATC 90 that's upside down but you can read it but these are known as US 90s why US market I guess but four colors bright red summer yellow parrot green Aquarius blue really there's no difference we're just recapping a prior video there's no difference really between uh, 70 and 71 there are some early design things that you'll see uh, do I have one in here this has the early heel guards doesn't have any holes for the rubber that comes in the same year. This is a 70. But even with uh, 19 other 1970s, you'll see the rubber through hold. They're pinned with a little pin. Uh, I'm told by Mike Pomgren that they had an adhesive style that went on, but they fell off. So you end up with this. So there's, there's early first gen 90s. But they're all really the same. And the rule of thumb is, you know, cutting off at the one zero, then one zero is rule of thumb accepted to be a, a 70, a one one, then and up would be a 71. So really quick down a dirty rule of thumb. So four colors for the first year, first two years. Two colors for the next two years, 72 and 73, uh, Tahitian red and mighty green. So these are 73, 73, 72, 72, and then 74, Daytona orange. So those are the kind of the origins of the, the Honda three-wheeler. So let's, let's follow this through time. So 74, how will we know 
where 74 leaves off and where to begin. Oh, look, here's another 74. So this 74, I picked up a trike fest from my buddy Mitch, and I've since put a seat cover on it and fixed the tires, and I would like to sell it. So 74, last year the balloon tires. 75, a very hard year to find. Um, this one's got some stitching to fix that original seat. I would rather have that seat than a reproduction seat cover, which that is, uh, just because that's the original one. I don't know why these are so hard to find. Uh, if it was involved uh, or attributed to an earthquake in Japan or, or what, but this is my 75. I got this one over the winter, so it's a different one than what appears in a, another video. This has got a chrome headlight shell. I don't know if that's off a different bike or it's just been chromed or what, but 74, 75. 76, 90, 77, 78, 90. These seem like they're the most common. When you see a, a normal tire 90, it's like you most of the time see a 78. But that ends the, the ATC 90. And in 79, it goes to 110. Look at that. So this is, uh, you know, mildly restored by a previous owner i got yelled at because i said i restored a machine that i, I kind of fixed up in a different video just recently so definitely not a restoration let's say that rattle canned rims where these changed nan wandy wanda wanda tires that's not the right seat cover doesn't even look like it well i guess it looks similar it should look like this but 1979 first year of the 110 1980, second year of the 110. This one's a little bit more tastefully, quote unquote, restored by a previous owner. I didn't do this, but that's a little bit more correct. You don't see these a lot. So this is the last year of that kind of bubble tank. The fenders are very similar to the 1981 fenders, but the tank gets different contours. Square headlight now with a switch in the light. We've seen that, we've seen that difference in a different 80, 81, 82 setup. Look at this, the 200s, 1980, round headlight, 81, square headlight with a switch, 82, square headlight, no switch because it's here now, not there. So back to the 110s where we were. So. Got the switch here. This one's a little ratty. I uh, I just picked up another 81 110 over here. We'll uh, we'll detour. I got this from my buddy Dan and a tote of of goodies. So I'm gonna be making the nicest 81 110 that I can out of probably this chassis because this chassis is a lot cleaner. So nicest tank will go on this. This headlight is nicer than that one. So. We'll do a little Admiral Swappington on the 81-110 when we get a minute. This 82-110 is very clean. So switch on the headlight goes away because it's all on the control here. In 81, your on-off run is here. Headlight control here, nothing here, not even a brake lever. This is the brake lever delete kit. These were kind of cheap back in the day and quite popular. So 82, this little uh, peanut came from Virginia. This is one of those deals where I bought it and I arranged for it to be shipped through my mom. Thanks mom, my mom loves me. But she uh, rented a U-Haul when she came home for the summer um, from Tennessee and grabbed this for me, met the guy, but pretty clean unit, right? Original tires. Nice shape. You want to see the heartbreak of this machine? Let's show you the heartbreak. I tubed the tires, but over time that has totally let go from there 
to there and I think it grows. So that's, that's a bummer. Um, this is the, uh, the FR Whamulass. So I got to see what, what machines have what tires on it. And maybe I do have another FR Whamulass across a different machine that I can somehow get back on this. But that's a nice one. So where are we at? 1982-110. Now the body style changes after 82 to PJ Hart's least favorite body style, the 83 and on 110 and also 125M. We've covered the 125Ms, which I've got a couple of them over there, but the second gen, well, would you call that second gen or would you call second gen when the tank switches? Still the same kind of chassis, right? Hard telling not knowing. I guess we do know. Still hard telling. So, last gen, we can say that. 83, 83, 83, 84, 84. And I got an 84 blue one in the other room that we'll talk about in a minute. But pretty cool little units. They, they do change slightly from 83 to 84. Oh, and 85. I didn't mention that. Uh, the rack, the rack mounting is different in 83 because I, when I picked this guy up from my buddy Tyler Mayfield at Trike Fest, he was showing me the difference at the rear. The rear of the frame on an 83 is more narrow. So like that rack won't interchange with that rack. This has got a wider mounting mechanism. Let's see if we can confirm that. So narrow at the bottom, wider up top. Oh, this is wider at the bottom and I'm giving myself a foot cramp. Oh my goodness. So this is wider at the bottom. Why? Why'd they do that? That's interesting though, huh? So, little tidbit. As far as I know, they're extremely similar machines. Obviously these are the superior blue 110s. These are not Christmas specials. We can't even refer to these as Christmas specials. These are just blue 110s. Eventually what I wanna do is take the, the nicest parts of each of these machines, make the nicest one and uh, keep that and that part weighs with the other one. This is an 84. The other 84 I have has a fairing on it. So I will make the nicest one that I can out of those while keeping the fairing and sell the other. That's a nice chrome rack on the rear. That's a neat little Honda line option. Those are not standard. This is Honda line. This is not, I don't know what this is. I've repainted it and made it look pretty along with the front rack and the easy rider pegs, but I don't know. These are the, the rare and sought after XA 801s, the 22 inch. Those would be an option. They work on this machine, but really they were an option for like a 250SX. 85, last year of the 110. It's got a little bit of a stump guard there. I believe that's CMP. It's got a front rack, a Honda line front rack. This has 250SX tires on it. And that front one always leaks down. And I believe it is because it is a uh, a tire designed for a one-piece rim, but it's on a two-piece rim, so it doesn't have that thick, meaty bead that you need if you're sealing to a two-piece rim. But I'd rather have those tires than Chang Shin, right? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, guys? So 84, 125M, 85, 125M, same body style. These fenders will interchange. We know that the 83 mud flaps are different. That's actually 84 mud flaps on this 83. You can tell, see the decal difference? Somebody's uh, swapped those out, done a little Admiral Swappington on those. Because the decals like this should come down like the hockey stick and then come into the fenders, but these have the hockey stick and a chop, chop, chop. So we know those are actually 85. Rear fenders. 
84 style. They've got that extra contour. You know, just 110 stuff. So back here also is the uh, the 200M lineup, which I've never really featured. Uh, this one's cool. It's got a chrome rear rack, but it, as you can tell, if you look at it, it's a little twisty over there. I think this one, look at this crack. This one had an oopsie early in its life because it's a really clean chassis and everything. These tires are like minimal use. They have some dry rot on them. I had to tube these after I brought this home, but I was able to get the, the tube and the tube in them and the bead to seat. Uh, but it, it's got a weird thing about it. Like if you look at it, I think it's, it's got an issue. I have a frame for one over in my parts depot hidden, not because it's special, but just cause it's got a bunch of crap in front of it that I thought maybe I'd swap out. I don't know that I'll ever do that. 85, we featured this in the 85 lineup video, so I don't need to belabor it. These racks were optional on these, you know, headlight guards and, and surrounds were optional on these. So this, this had the optional rack, but not the headlight guard. And this had the headlight guard. And at one point a Speedo, as we can tell by this and that, but it's missing. Um, yeah, so that's the 200 M it's kind of like, it follows this trajectory where we had the 185 and 80 Then they upped the displacement a little bit and called it a 200 in 81, 82, 83 gets suspension. We've covered this in a different video. Feel free to refer back to all my old stuff. Then in 84, is this the, the progression? 200 becomes the 200M. We get electric start. There's no high-low. You know, this is kind of an electric start version of the 200. So why M? Why do we call this a 200M? Because it's a mystery. Nobody knows. I don't know. But before we move on, I guess, let's look over here. This is the uh, 86 250SX that Donnie buys all road in my snurt video. It's got some TRX four by four rims and tires on the rear. I don't know what they're off of. It's got a super trap on it. Headlight guard, kind of neat, but that's my sled. I got a windshield because I broke the other one. Gotta swap that out sometime. This is a little uh, 1970 US 90. We know it's early heel guards, no, no holes but also incorrect front fender. And what's up with these tires? Oh my gosh, you serious? Okay. Anyway, just wanted to feature those. That's my motorcycle, it's a S90. This is not my QA50, this is Donnie Bizal's. He left it here in my stewardship uh, for some reason the other day. If he doesn't come back for it, I'll sell it. I'll let you guys know. So this is my lesser 7590 that I'm gonna be selling here soon. I might have to inspect these tires because one of these tires might be a good donor for my 82 110. Uh, rest assured when I sell this, it will not have those whammy last tires on it because I'm a hoarder. We already talked about this uh, 81 110 that we're gonna do a swap out on. Tire Central over there. What else is here? A couple 185S's. We've featured these in my 185S, 200S video. We don't need to belabor them, but another example of 1981. Switch on the headlight. On off run here. Nothing here, but an 82. The switch goes away. They put it over here. Headlight controls are there. Nothing on the lens. So that was a common thing, a design upgrade. This guy is a 110, I believe. It's got some cool trick parts on it. I got this from my pal, Joe Whalen, a couple years ago. Round headlights, got a twist throttle. I don't know why. I don't like twist throttle. But that's cool. It's got a super trap or something. Aftermarket exhaust on it. 
I can't see it. I think it's Super Trap. Yeah, it looks like Super Trap. I've got a Bandito frame sitting over there. So I, I figure between the frame, this machine, and maybe this machine, I put a 125 motor with reverse in a Bandito frame with goodies off of this. Possibly. Hard telling that no one. I've heard that before. So here's, here's a US 90. 74 ATC 90, I suppose. This has the Argo style tires on it. These are incorrect balloon tires. And that one always leaks down, even with no weight on it. So it's kind of unfortunate. I would also sell that if you're interested and you're watching this. I picked this guy up after a snurt. So it's become a bit of a shelf. PJ wanted me to feature my, my nasty stuff. Uh, my my yuckies and they're kind of all hidden over here i'm not even sure i could get in here my boneyard so under the shelf i've got a <laughs> i got this chopper bicycle i traded my buddy eric uh, a week's worth of lunch money in like 1994 for that chopper bicycle and i did custom paint job on it uh the seat cover was thrashed so i just went raw dog on the uh, stamp steel um, <laughs> on this and I had some black mags and I could never get the front tight and one day I was I thought it was super cool I was riding this in town and saw my buddy Doug and, and his girlfriend and I went to pop a wheelie and show him how cool I was and as I popped up I watched that front wheel go whew. and uh, as I stared at the the outline of my forks bare against the sky I knew it was not going to be a good landing. I should have just put my foot down, right? But you don't think about that stuff in the moment. And I planted one of those forks into the asphalt and it whomp, bent out. And I think it was this one. You can see it's kind of bent. We did our best to straighten it back. But that's the funny story behind that bike. There's that 200M that in front end that I got in case I wanted to try to remedy that 84. I've got a crusty... 185S back there, I believe it's an 82. Got a 70, I believe that's a 78. 90 just chilling there. Part stoner if I need it. That's that's a 1980 110. Look at all this stuff. How do you, you know, you hoard for so long, you get distracted and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you got more stuff than you know what to do with. This is probably the best video I've ever made, I think. I've got a 125M with an XA801 on the front. I got a 79110 carcass there. I got another 125M carcass there. Got some motors, some trannies. Got an 86250R frame. It's all powder coated silver, just chilling over here. Don't have a motor to put in it. Got some random fenders. Got some tires. A blue Honda sign. There's the D. What else was I just going to show you? Oh, got a couple up in the rafters there. That's a 87 200X frame and an 85 350X frame, all powder coated, ready to go. And everything I need for them is under there for the most part. Got a buildable 70 chassis carcass here. So that's the ugly stuff. Some 110 front ends. That was for PJ Hart. That section of this video was sponsored by Paul Joseph Hart, Jr. Jr. For more great content suggested by Paul Joseph Hart, Jr. Jr. Stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe. Here's my 70s. So, as we know, recapping, 74 was Daytona orange with flames on the tank. 75, they dialed it back a little bit. Scarlet red, more modest decals. And then they took a break. Why? Not quite sure. But 1978, they said, we're getting the band back together. We're going to make this second gen ATC 70. We're going to give it a red number plate. 
plastic fenders that go all the way around. Different contour, different shape. 1979, 1980. Kind of has like this weird thing, like these orange kind of, it's like the Tahitian, like you see that's red. And maybe the sun color is, I think you can see it pretty good here. It's a different orange, or it's a different red is what I mean. Those are Meyer actually, it's old school Meyer. But you can see it on this uh, 1981. It's, they're different. It's like an orangey red. This is my worst, one of my worst machines. Doesn't even have a spark plug in it. We can just imagine what the inside of that cylinder looks like. Uh, I got this from Mitch Rapucci. If you buy from Mitch, this is kind of the caliber of machine you'll get from him. I'm just joking, but I did buy this from Mitch because I didn't have an 81 and I needed one and this one popped up. I did source a grab bar for it at Trike Fest. Vinny Staff was trying to buy a grab bar from me because he ruined his doing the wheelie competition over there when we had uh, our event here the other day. I wouldn't sell it to him because I need it for this. 82, respectable condition. Had that tank redone by my pal Ryan Cogswell and his dad. 83, these are, you know, what we've generally accepted. I'm treading lightly here. Generally accepted to be known as Christmas specials. Given away or raffled off around Christmas time, 1982 or not. Jury's still out. We don't have a smoking gun on that. 84 and 85 last year. So that's all the ATC 70s. What I'm gonna do, might ruffle fenders, I, I really don't care. But I'm gonna, beneath that Honda sign that is probably just gonna start coming into focus, I'm gonna build a shelf from this post to the other side of the A and put my 70s uh, beneath that Honda sign. I got a tractor now so I can do that and take them down as I see fit. I think we've covered everything in that room though. We're doing great. That's a six foot Honda sign if you've never seen that. Just got that mounted the other day with the help of my good friend Tricycle Guy. Who uh, if you haven't followed him on YouTube, you, you need to do that. He's got great quality content. Only mildly snarky with his delivery. But it's kind of like the snark that you grow to love. You want it, and when you don't have it, you, you know you miss it. We've just talked about all the big reds in a recent video. If you haven't seen that, check it out. But to recap, and then we'll tease, this will be a great thing to bleed into the other room. So uh, this is all the, all the big reds except one. I don't even know if I can call the one that's missing a big red, and I'll explain. So obviously, we all know this is 82. 83, chain drive, uh, high-low range, electric start, that's that. So in 84, there was a design change, the 200 ES, so electric start with shaft, uh, and a, I've never really featured this on my channel, but this is my Honda Line trailer, or Honda trailer, sold only in Canada. So this one actually came from Montreal. Uh, my buddy Vinny, who I wouldn't sell the grab bar to that I mentioned just just a couple minutes ago, he uh, did hook me up and give me the inside line on buying this trailer. So I am thankful. Maybe I should have sold him that grab bar, but probably not. But same color scheme as the 84, so it makes sense to hook this there. 84 Big Red 200 ES. So previously, even myself, I might have said things like, this was a one-year-only model. They didn't make the 200 ES any other year, but through the power of the internet and YouTube and this old trike, we know that they did make this model another year. They made it in 1985, but they didn't sell it in the US. They sold it in such foreign lands as Europe and the Australia and the New Zealand. But also in 85 in America, they made the 250 ES first year 85 look decal looks like that. 86 looks like that. 87 looks like that. Last big red sold in the U.S. But we do go on. Can't really read that. All right, there's the decal. This is a 1988 big red sold in with this decal set up in uh, Europe. 
but in Australia, New Zealand, they would be branded super reds all the years. Any, there were no big reds there. They were all super reds. So it's not an 88 only thing. Uh, now we're, we went up to 88 and now we're coming back down 87, 86, 86 big blue. Did they make a big blue? No, they didn't. This is Meyer fenders. Uh, I haven't even finished this. So, you know, I, I'm embarrassed to even show it to you, but whatever. Uh, custom, custom color. And this is my, my other 85 big red, originally purchased by my uncle who goes by Bubba. So we had some custom decals made up, big Bubba. Okay, so recapping, going back through. Which one are we missing? Did you figure it out yet? So remember how this guy was an oddball? They had released the 250 ES, but it was like they were trying to use up 84 200 ES parts. There was an, another oddball situation in 84. When they went from shaft, I'm sorry, chain, to shaft in 84, wouldn't you know, they made some chain drive 84s. So they wouldn't be ES because they're not shaft. They would be, they would be chain drive 1984 200 E's. So that's my first reveal of the picture of the 84 200 E that I'm getting to finish off my collection. Stay tuned for updates on that. That's all we're saying right now, but to recap things, this is all the makes and models of Honda three-wheeler, plus some fat cats and plus some four-wheelers, but all but one. And this is the one to finish off the collection. So this was last year, the Honda wing we set up in the field. My friend Todd captured it via drone. I finished off my Honda sign, put all my, my helmets up above it. I just got that helmet in the other day. I thought that was pretty cool. So, 200 E's. Let's let's cover these in the middle. This is just a really clean 83 185S that I've got. That's been featured in the 200S 185S video. This is another blue 110, the 84 I mentioned earlier with the blue Honda line fairing. Pick this up from my buddy Tyler at Trike Fest. Very cool unit. Featured in the Christmas special Great Debate video. Here is the 200S lineup. We got the 84 with the Honda line fairing. 85 with this basket, come to find out, is I think kind of a pack basket for an Articat snowmobile from like the 60s. The suspended. 85200S, previously owned by PJ Hart. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Blue cooler, or should I put a red cooler on it? I think I should do the red. And the uh, elusive 86200S with an XA801 on the front, Pro-Ams on the back, neither of which would have come on this. We know for a fact that that came with Dunlop. Dunlop tires. Okay. What shall we do now? More sport utility? All right. Going in reverse order. 87 250SX with a Speedo and a front rack and a tire that goes soft. Which is why we got a little block there. It's an OEM tire, but it's just about had it. So I think I'm going to swap that out with something else. 86 with a headlight guard. Meyer front fender. And uh, rear fenders that got cracked up during a fateful trip out to the mud flats. Which hopefully we'll get some mud flat, mud flat footage for you this coming fall. Boy, that's a lot of Fs. 85, 250SX with the rear rack. We featured these all in my comparison video for 250SXs. This also has that same condition where the front tire goes soft. That I think is the culprit of split rim, not sealing. I had those rims powder coated and they, uh, the front leaks down. But that's 87, 125M, very hard to come by machine. 
86 125m, 86 125m, nice little pair. This is more of the rider caliber. I think those are Yamaha tires on it. But this is a very nice all original machine. We'll go down here. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll come back to the quads. We'll talk about the fat cats. Everybody needs a pair of fat cats. We did a video on these. I did a little clickbait action, calling these the most dangerous machines the Honda ever made. But they, uh, they're they not, they're not really. Those are the little plywood squares I was gonna put under the kickstands, but never did. 87, 86. Very similar, subtle changes, different motor color. That's the gist of it. This one's got a Honda line headlight guard and rear rack. This one has aftermarket plastic and uh, they're both pretty rusty. One's better in some ways, the other's better in other ways. Then we've got the air-cooled 250R lineup. We have featured these in the video. 81, 82, 83, 84. 83 has the Honda line fairing on it and a 300 kit. This has Meyer fenders. This one's pretty original, painted rims. Pretty nice unit. This one came from Wisconsin. It's local. I came from Pittsburgh. I came from New Jersey. This one came from Pittsburgh. That one was local. Like a lot of these, I didn't just stumble on locally. I don't know if people think that. But that one came from Albany, New York area. This one was semi-local. That one was like three hours away. This guy I traded, he came to me. I came from Rome, New York, a couple hours away. This one came from Indiana. So, no, nope. The tank came from Indiana. The machine came from Rhode Island. So I will go wherever I need to, to, to get a machine if it's something I need or want. This little TRX-90 on the end I bought for the kids back in, I think, probably 2013. They were really too young to enjoy it. That's, my kids did that. Tried to act like I wouldn't notice it. If you got a front grab bar for a TRX-90, let me know. I'd be interested. 84200. Why do I have this? Because uh, it's sentimental. I grew up on one of those. I put the, the Honda Line brush guard on the front. I think that's neat. 07 Recon for my son. He, uh, after the tumble on the 86 250SX, he, he wanted to know if I might be able to help him out getting him a four-wheeler, and, and we did. We just did a video on these four, 91 250X, 92 250X. I had a couple brothers, the uh, Phillips brothers, come here today. For the event that we had and they brought their 91 and 92 250x's we took a little spin in the woods they took some pictures maybe i can get them and uh overlay them and show you they were pretty happy to be here so i was happy to have them but i had one of these growing up i sold the 84 200 dad let me buy the 250x with the money then i sold that to buy 350x that's how the story goes 99 400EX, single owner. Bought that from the dealership. Oh, let's see, where did these come from? New Jersey. San Diego, California. Central New York. New Jersey. Massachusetts. 88 250R, everyone needs that in their collection. Came from near Pittsburgh. Was previously owned by a gentleman in New Jersey. Previously owned by a gentleman in Massachusetts. I think it came from Michigan to Massachusetts. 85 250R with an 86 seat, an 86 motor, short track kit with non Honda line tank shrouds, but short track tank shrouds. The frame is an 85, the motor and other things are 86. The, the swing arm and brake caliper are 86, we can see that. So it's a little bit of a conundrum here. Here's my rider. You know, I noticed the other day. Look at that. Where's that coming out of? Is that just the... Yeah. Look at that. 
Why is that leaking? Yeah, not my fingers now. 85 350X with 86 rear fenders. This is like the confusion section that these guys are trans. They uh they don't know what year they are. Trans annual or something. It's probably a name for it. I just don't know. Things change so fast these days. 87 200X. Got to get some paint on that tank and some new decals. These are out of order. So last year, first year, first year's 83 with a funky tubular swing arm. 84, very similar, but modern kind of square tube, rectangular tube swing arm, very clean machine, came from my buddy Toby. This one uh, came locally, that came from Connecticut. Those two came semi-locally. Lance, the uh, 85 200X, it's super clean, came from Pittsburgh area. Super clean 86 200X came from New Jersey. This was uh, restored 85 350X, came from a uh, local area. So 350X is two year only, 85, 86. Here's a good comparison. That came out of my buddy's collection locally. Locally being like 45 minutes away. So I had one of these growing up. Sold it in 2010 and that's kind of why I guess I went off the deep end wanting to build this collection. Nice, clean 85 250R came from a gentleman in Texas. Nice 86 250R came from my buddy Mitch in uh, Maine. So contrary to what I said earlier in the video, Mitch does have nice machines that he sells to people. This one's got a sticker on the back. So it came out of California at one point. This guy's a local machine, I believe. Uh, came from my buddy, but restored by Pat Farnham. Clean, kind of like, it's not really a restoration. He just did a deep, deep cleaning and made it look super duper pretty. And this is, I think, the last machine to cover. This is a conversion, uh, a TPC built by Bill Casey. Uh, I won't speak ill of Bill Casey, but he has kind of earned himself a bad reputation. Uh, in many ways, this is the the best conversion in many ways. The, the geometry is very nice. There's other companies out there that will build them similar to these. Halls Racing, um, JTS out of uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Who else does it? BVC makes a great quality product. They are tremendous business people. Uh, Bill over there at BVC. Uh, I can't speak highly enough. Innovative, constantly coming out with, with new applications. Now they've got fat cat bikes. Uh, they're really doing awesome things, like you know, modern day big reds. But when it comes to this, like when you're converting from a, a dirt bike to a three-wheeler, there's some geometry that it's hard to overcome. So it's just a different feel. And I've, I've ridden one conversion that was a bike before. Honestly, I don't think it was a BVC, so I'm not gonna speak anything about that, but just they seem to have a higher back. They seem to sit higher. Uh, but can you get one of these? No, would, you, would I recommend you go get a TPC and send a donor machine and a bunch of money to Bill Casey? Absolutely not. Uh, that would be a good way to lose money. Um, <laughs> look up all the people that are very frustrated with him. But again, not going to speak ill of anybody. Uh, I would reach out to Halls Racing or JTS or another company if you're going to have a modern conversion done. But those are very radical machines. That came to me locally. Ryan Cogswell, who built this and turned it into what it looks like now, was up in Plattsburgh. And he got it from... Uh, Shad Spencer, I think, who's in Ohio. But, yeah. Let me recap as we close out, just saying where things came from. Indiana, Cape Cod, locally. I don't know where it was before that. Pennsylvania, Ohio, local, semi-local, 45 minutes away. Uh, Western Pennsylvania, local, out of a tree line of a farm field. New Hampshire, uh, Central New York, Vermont, um, Pennsylvania, 
semi-local, hour west of here. Pretty darn local, about 20 minutes away. I think I covered those. New Jersey, Pittsburgh area. Yeah, I covered all these. Connecticut, Illinois, 45 minutes away, 45 minutes away. Let's walk outside. Right from my hometown, 45 minutes away. Uh, over near Rome, New York, an hour away. Uh, England, uh, Catskills. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, England, about an hour away, Pittsburgh, uh, picked that up at Trike Fest, so Indiana, southern Vermont, 45 minutes away, um, about 45 minutes away, my buddy snagged this for me out near Buffalo and brought it to me. About an hour away near Albany, New York. This was from Virginia. We mentioned that. This is from up near Champlain, New York, about two hours away. Down in the Catskills, New Jersey, Indiana, New Jersey, Maine, um, Texas, semi local, 40 minutes away ish, near Buffalo. This is weird. My buddy Mitch and Vinny were on like a trip buying stuff up and they picked this up and I convinced them to sell it to me. So it's kind of, I don't know where necessarily that came from. I forget it, even how it got here. Buffalo area. Same buddy out there grabbed that for me. Um, near Plattsburgh, near Albany, New Jersey. Originally to me from New Jersey. We did a video on this one. Then I sold it to Nick Sincati. He shipped it to Louisiana. Had it restored by Travis Gisclair. Travis shipped it back to Nick. Nick sold it to Chad Bennett. Chad Bennett uh, gamed it, we'll say. And the guy who won the game sold it to me. So it came to me from New Jersey twice. <laughs> uh, Semi-local, about 40, no, about 30 minutes away. Also New Jersey. Yes. This was brought here. I traded a guy a machine for this, but it came from near Rome area. This is also central New York, Indiana, New Jersey, New Jersey, near Buffalo, southern Vermont, but he came to me about an hour west of here, New Jersey near Albany. People wonder how you remember these, but these are like kids, you know? Massachusetts, but I had it delivered uh, 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away, near Binghamton, New York, Poughkeepsie, Copenhagen, New York, Copenhagen, um, Catskills, New Jersey, no, Indiana, Missouri, but I had it picked up and then another guy picked it up from that guy and brought it to Trek Fest for me. And you know what? I think that's it. So that, that's my collection in a nutshell. Um, that is all but one of the Honda ATCs made. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, probably in the next month, I'll be able to, to show you the last one, the, the completion of the collection, where we finish it off. And that's that. But I just wanted to take the opportunity while I had these all out to go through them like that with you because it's I don't do this often. It is a tremendous amount of work. I've got a couple hours worth of pushing left to do. In closing, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Uh, I'm not doing this to to brag or 
flaunt, uh, in my opinion, and you can criticize me if you want. Uh, I'm doing this for informational purposes, to document you know, the, the makes and models. And I don't know, it was a goal. Uh, to recap, my goal was to get one of each model, make, year, and color. It's been almost 20 years that the goal has existed, but it's only been a little over five years that I've been doing this. Five and a half, we'll say. So when you have an understanding wife and uh, some disposable money that you can invest, because it is an investment, in this, you, this is the type of stuff you can do. I think the more important piece of that is the understanding wife. And Allison, I thank you so much. You were an amazing wife. I don't know where I'd be without you. And that's the honest truth. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. From uh, from my garage to your garage. Come back soon. We'll see you next time.